The following is an exclusive presentation of WI Garden Media, the voice of Garden Talk Radio. Coming up on the program today, we're going to deal with that summer heat as well as weeds in your garden. Our guest is author Tasha Greer, and we'll answer your garden questions. The hour is full, and it starts right now. You are listening to the most informationally packed hour of garden-focused radio in the country and on the internet with your host, husband and wife team, Joey and Holly Baird. This is the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. And we welcome you to another episode edition of the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. I am your host, Joey Baird. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend, and gardening partner, Holly Baird. This program is for you, about you, to help your garden grow better, to maintain your landscape, grow healthier trees, as well as make that grass a little bit greener. We thank you for tuning in, whether you're listening to us on one of the 18 AM and FM frequencies, broadcasting our program here in 2022 through our radio app, through our main, our apparent website, which is the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, underneath the Season 6 tab at the top of the page, in-studio video replay, podcast replay, however you're doing it, we thank you for doing it. If you would like to be part of the program, there's a couple of ways in which you can participate in the program, and one being, send us an email at gardentalkradio at gmail.com. That's gardentalkradio at gmail.com. If you're more of the talkative type and you would like to communicate with us via phone, you can do that as well on the Proclamation Hotline brought to you by Proclamation Goods. That number, 1-800-927-SHOW. Toll-free, coast-to-coast, 1-800-927-7469. Proclamation Goods creates cookware for the eco-conscious home chef. Their pans are non-toxic, have a lifetime warranty, and are made right here in Wisconsin. Their award-winning stainless steel Proclamation Duo cookware set is a 12-inch skillet and a stock pot that doubles as a wok. Best of all, the skillet and stock pot hinge together to form a Dutch oven. It's two pans with a versatility of 10, empowering you to cook more with less. If you care about your health and strive for a more sustainable lifestyle, then Proclamation Goods is for you. Supplies limited, so order yours now at proclamationgoods.com. Well, Holly, the uh, summer is getting near, if not already here. Some days we've had already very warm temperatures and then gets cool again. We're going to deal with that summer heat for you and your garden. And I think before we get started with your garden, we should talk about you as dealing with the summer heat. It's not that uh, you may not, it may be warm. Let's see, how do I say this? We're all getting older, so it's more difficult to deal with the heat than what we once thought we could as a younger age. I guess that's a better way to putting it. Sure, I okay. guess. I mean, you could say that or just... Be- because um, you talk to people, oh, it, it, I don't remember it ever being this hot. Well, we were all younger and we were more, well, eh, actually, I'm, I'm fine. It technically has gotten hotter Not, through okay, climate but change. You understand what my point is. I understand yeah, what okay. you're saying, yes. I remember when a kid, when I was a kid, it was probably the same temperature. Well, when you were a kid, we didn't care. Well, right, we didn't care. That's the thing is you don't pay attention to that stuff, and then you become more self-aware, and you're like, okay, now I have you know sweat dripping down my back, and it's uncomfortable, and I hate it, and yeah. Well, so, I mean, you, you, and we've uh, I've qualified this many times, not on the air, but you would not be, you would not make it on the farm. No, you, I'm you not. Would, a you're not a farm girl. No, no, uh, not at all. You, you couldn't handle the bale. Make or the the bailing or the any of that moving cattle you just anyway uh, I'm we're, a city girl you're a city girl but we still need to deal with you could, the heat you couldn't handle the city I uh, know I've seen no uh, I had to teach you how to drive in the city yeah. and it's still questionable yeah, okay so anyway. let's deal with the heat for us as gardeners or people who may not be gardeners but we just like to be outside on the patio porch deck in the woods whatever the case is we need to think about what we are going to wear Holly. Yeah, absolutely. You want to wear um, loose fitting clothing as one. Two is natural fiber. So like cotton, linen, they even have clothes made with like bamboo now. So, so what would be like a, a material that you would let go, uh, don't don't wear that? What are we talking about? The, the like synthetic? A poly, like a polyester okay. synthetic. Things that don't breathe. Right. Things that don't breathe. Now, if it's wicking, that's a little bit different than, um, than like something like a more staunch polyester. And a one, one really good 
thing to invest in would be something like a merino wool. And you're thinking, isn't wool scratchy and hot? But merino wool is actually nice and light and it can um, help keep you warm and it can also help wick moisture away from you to help keep you cool. Okay. And kind of like very, a natural air conditioning? Kind of, yeah. Okay. In a way. Um, so that's an option for you. It's not super cheap, but it is a good investment. So if you are well, maybe going to be spending some time outside in the heat, you may want to, you know, put together a little outfit. Well, that's the thing, you know, with our sponsors, with with anything in life, if you buy the El Cheapo stuff, you you should expect it not to last long and doesn't perform the way it was meant to perform. You put a little money, a little investment into it. Most of the time, that stuff gives gives you a good amount of time of, of work out of it. Uh, let's talk about drinking water here. We, we just don't... Uh, Clothing is one thing, but hydration is another. Right. You absolutely want to make sure you are drinking. And a beer is not hydration. No. You want to make sure you are drinking plenty of water. And if you, you know, maybe you are enjoying some cocktails, you want to try to drink um, some water between each cocktail Mm -hmm. because it does help keep you hydrated as much as possible. Another thing is, is that if you are feeling a little woozy, maybe you're in the sun somewhere, if you get to shade, that will help a lot too, especially during the peak of the day. Uh, there's a saying, and, and one of the uh, European uh, allotment YouTubers say as uses it, do a little, but do it often. Right. And if you think you're thirsty, you already are thirsty, and you should have been drinking water already. If you think, well, I need a drink, you should have already had one. Right. And we all fall into this. It's not just, oh, Holly and I stay hydrated all the time. This is a, a universal. We're all together in this group talking. Yes. Another thing is always think about sunblock. I know people might only think about sunblock if they're going to the pool or like an amusement park or something like that. But even if you are just spending some time outside. The sun's not dis- discriminatory. No, it's not. So even if you are spending time outside in your yard, just relaxing, hanging out with your children or neighbors or whatever, you still want to consider wearing sunscreen. Even on clo- cloudy days. On cloudy yeah. days, yep. And then even on your, make sure you get something for your face. If you do sweat a lot or if you are, you know, if you are at the pool and you're getting in all the water toweling off, that does towel the sunblock off, so you want to reapply. I'm sure there's organic and inorganic sunblocks. Uh, we, we've not dived dove all, into that. There's but, all types of sunblocks. Right. You can definitely do your own research. Um, I, you know, it's it's really up to you. It's right. like, do you want a chance maybe a little bit, little bit of it? Getting to your from your skin into your organs, your liver was probably going to detoxify it versus... You know, just burning right. your skin and right, and a little vitamin D or sunburn. Right. There, there's a balance there. Right. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, definitely, you know, the hydration, and if you do feel, if you definitely, maybe you don't have air conditioning in your home, then you want to, on the really hot days like the the heat, what is it? Index heat, uh, index days. Consider going to the library if a you wet are. A rag around your neck makes a big difference. Yeah, that too. Um, there's all sorts of articles that came out, especially when in the Pacific Northwest, they had that heat wave mm-hmm. last year that talks about how to keep your home home cool and yourself cool without air conditioning. Um, and one of the tips was definitely like leave the house during the day. And um, definitely if you can prevent opening the windows during the hottest time of the day, it seems counterintuitive, but you're not letting that heat in. And then also, like you said, a wet rag airflow and then just making sure that you are if you don't need an appliance plugged in appliances do put out a lot of heat without you realizing it and you can unplug it and leave it out well let's talk about the garden watering if you don't water your garden you shouldn't garden because you're just going to have a desert uh or even a desert has more moisture than some people's gardens by the time the season's in because they don't water uh there's many devices in which you can water you can use the old-fashioned watering can you can use a water hoop uh, sponsor the show. Dripworks uh, has uh, irrigation, timer, or manual. Sponsor the show. Uh, tree diaper. Sponsor the show. Also works around vegetables and shrubs, trees, anything that needs hydrated. Uh, tree diaper, as you've heard in the program before, it's you don't need no pipes, hoses, or anything. It just it naturally absorbs and then releases the water as it needs. Uh, anyway, any in any means of watering, consistent watering, and keeping that soil damp like a sponge how do you do that on a really hot day utilize mulch mulch holds the moisture in it does suppress some weeds mulch can be anything from shredded paper to weed fabric to plastic fabric uh, a weed barrier don't recommend those but those can be done chemical free seed free grass clippings uh, 
a straw, if you have leaves left over, uh, even we have done is weeded the garden and threw the weeds on the ground and let them dry out, but they they add a barrier to the soil. That's the key. Preventing having some kind of barrier between the soil and the air to hold that moisture in. So mulch, mulch, and mulch is the key to all of this. Now, it depends on the growing season. Usually early in the spring, late in the fall, you don't need to worry as uh as much about hydration, but there are times in both seasons and and including summer where it just doesn't seem like you can put enough water on the garden. It's drying out quite quicker than you can uh, get the moisture to it. With that mulch, that will fix a lot of that problem and keep the soil cooler, which means the root zones are cooler, which means the plants are a bit more uh, able to produce. There is a time in which the ambient temperature reaches a certain temperature that the plants, tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, do, and I think cucumbers, do quit producing because it's too hot. It just, the pollen won't, it, it just kills the pollen. So there is times in which you have zero control over that. Now, gardeners, more predominantly in the south, southern portions of the United States, will look at using shade cloth. Shade cloth is basically what it, that, means it is a woven black fabric that repels sunlight and there's different densities of it or shade percentages uh, from 50 to 70 you can pick whatever you want and they will make a canopy over their gardens and plant the more sensitive plants in that area and then uh, apply the correct uh, shade fabric to allow certain amount of light in but you know, hold out the heat, kind of protect the plants that way. So that is also another way in which you can deal with the heat. Um, more about you right now, making sure, because if you're not healthy and hydrated, your garden doesn't have a chance. There's no reason to go out there and, and try to, oh, I'll, I'll make it. You got to be good and and at, at least 85%. Otherwise, and, you can't, it's not going to work for you. Right, absolutely. And you're also, if you go out there and you think you have to do all the things and do it in the high heat of the day, you're just going to get tired and frustrated and you're not going to enjoy yourself. So we want you to, to be mindful, take breaks, drink water, enjoy gardening and make it the best for yourself. Right. And Walton's is also mindful of you. They've offered a coupon code and they have everything you need in order to cook and or process the animals in which you harvest or hunt or fish for. Walton's has everything but the meat. Yeah, we are brought to you today by our sponsor, Walton's Inc. Listen, we know you care about your where your food comes from. Canning and preserving fruits and vegetables is great. But what about the meat? At waltonsinc.com, you can get all the equipment, seasoning, supplies to make sausage, jerky, and any other meat product your way to your high standards. Do you want to make snack sticks that people will actually like? Walton's created meatjustics.com, an informational site to help you make the best finished product. Walton's even has a full line of their own meat grinders, mixers, sausage stuffers, etc. to help you go from animal to edible. You can use code Grow 50 to save 10% off your orders of 50 or more and get free shipping. That's waltonsinc.com. Hang out with us. When we return, the discussion will be about how you can deal with some of those weeds, if not all those weeds, coming up in your garden. Got a question for Joey and Holly? Send it via email anytime to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. We know that you appreciate the value of a beautifully landscaped yard, but tackling such a project yourself can seem way too complicated, right? Bloomin' Easy plants are the answer. Their plants are low maintenance and offer exceptional beauty and color for your yard. Plus, they offer free seasonal care reminders with simple how-to videos tailored to the plants that you choose. With Bloomin' Easy on your side, creating the yard that you've always wanted becomes as easy as plant, water, and relax. Check them out at your local garden center or by visiting bloominteasyplants.com. Deer Defeat is an all-natural repellent to keep deer, rabbits, and groundhogs away from your precious plants. Deer Defeat protects your plants day and night, dries clear, and odorless. It will not clog your sprayer. Deer Defeat works for 30 days through rain, snow, and freeze. Safe, effective, and works on rabbits. Money-back guarantee. To purchase, go to DeerDefeat.com and use code RADIO. 
to save 10% on your order. Deer Defeat, it can't be beat. Chip Drop is a website you can sign up for free wood chip mulch delivery right to your door. For free, Chip Drop connects homeowners and gardeners with tree services who are trying to get rid of their wood chips. You can also sign up to get free logs and firewood. Go to ChipDrop.com to learn more and sign up for a free account. A little bit of summer is what the whole year is all about. Barbecues, parties with friends. The fun is endless unless the sun or thunderstorms have damaged your outdoor furniture. Keep it looking brand new with custom protective covers from CoversAndAll.com. They have fabric choices for days that are 100% waterproof, coated to protect against sun, and can be custom designed for any size or shape, and placing or removing them. Easy peasy. Visit CoversAndAll.com and use code GARDEN25 at checkout to save 25% on your purchase. A non-selective herbicide that is also USDA certified? You bet. No More Weeds by Naturally Green Products. The same great company that brings you no more bugs, no more weeds. Kills weeds with no harsh chemicals, no glyphosate. No More Weeds is a commercial grade vinegar base with a propriety sticking agent. Great around pools, decks, patios, etc. Visit natgreenproducts.com, enter promo code WEEDS, W E E D S, and buy three one gallon size units, get the fourth one free. Are you tired of mixing and matching soil amendments to give your garden what it needs to flourish? Try Climate Guard, the nutritionally complete all-in-one organic fertilizer made with ethically derived NPK, beneficial bacteria, crop boosting fungi, humic acid, and silica. Climate Guard uses cutting edge microbiology and ethically derived plant nutrition to produce the same results as conventional fertilizers without the negative environmental impacts. Each Climate Guard pellet is infused with a high performance blend of living organisms that will continue building a rich ecosystem in your soil long after application. Available in 7.5 and and 15 pound bags, Climate Guard is delivered directly to your door and available for order at shopjohnnyappleseed.com. That's shopjohnnyappleseed.com. Spring is around the corner, folks, and Algae Men reminds you that this year, when it's time for spring cleaning, don't forget about the outside of your house. Algae Men is southeastern Wisconsin's go-to for exterior cleaning, including roofs, siding, decks, and concrete. So if you spot ugly black stains or green splotchy stuff on your home, let Algae Men get rid of it for you. We can restore the area back to its original look, not only in a timely manner, but also at an affordable cost. For a free estimate, visit us today at algaemen.com. Algae Men, we clean areas that you don't want to. Thanks for listening to the Garden with Joy and Holly radio show. As you've heard through the program, many companies offering coupon codes to help you save on great products. If you've missed any of those coupon codes, you can go to our parent website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, and click on the Money tab at the top of the page, and they're all listed for you. The Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Pro Plugger, Chip Drop, Bell Buster, Johnny Appleseed, Ivy Organic, Milkweed Balm, Waltons Incorporated, Bloomin' Easy Plants, Jung Seeds. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. Watering, we've talked about in the first segment for you and your plants. But again, Holly, if you don't have water, you get a dead garden. And with a dead garden, there's not much there. But tree diaper can really help you out with all of that. Right. And your plants may have some comments about your watering methods. Maybe they're getting too much you've water. Made them, you've made them that mad. That they're going to They're going <laughs> to start you. talking. Uh-huh. Yeah. Maybe you give them too much water, too little. Just, you know, take the guesswork out of this by using the tree diaper. Tree diaper is a revolutionary watering system that stabilizes soil moisture by taking up excess water and slowly releases it when plants need it. The tree diaper is filled with water from rain or when you water, and it slowly releases the water over three weeks. No pipes, hoses, or electricity needed. Whether you're a first-time gardener or advanced, Tree Diaper will improve the way you water your plants. It's made in the USA. You can find all the sizes they have available at treediaper.com. They will, Tree Diaper will keep your plants happy. That is treediaper.com. Well, let's uh, discuss, Holly, the uh, four-letter word that many people don't like, and it's not that one. It's weeds. <laughs> uh, well, actually, five-letter word. Weeds, W-E-E-D-S. And we all have them unless, uh, I mean, you, we all have them. To some degree, right. some some many much more some have much more than others, 
Uh, some don't care. They just plant and then they harvest what they can. Others are very meticulous about going in and removing every fiber of a weed that they possibly can do such in order to make their yard or their garden or their yard for that matter uh, picture perfect and magazine cover presentable. Right. It's definitely a for many people, it's a never ending battle. And for some people, it's like, well, you know, they go in strong, they make sure everything's weeded, they plant their plants, and then they're just like, okay, I'm going to live my life. And if the weeds happen, they happen. And there's no right or wrong way, whatever, whatever floats your boat. But with that being said, one thing that you can do for weeds is you can mulch them to uh -huh. suppress. And mulch is, um, is a blanket of... Uh, Material. But, you know, it's a... <laughs> <laughs> it's a blanket solution for a lot of things, whether it be keeping the soil moist, um, maybe feeding your soil at some point uh, once it breaks down, or in this case, suppressing weeds. And it, some people prefer to spray their weeds, uh, sometimes with a harsh chemical that contains glyphosate. Others may choose a more natural means, and, and natgreenproducts.com has such a product. Uh, use coupon code WEEDS, W-E-E-D-S, at checkout and buy three one-gallon units of the horticultural grade uh, vinegar weed killer and get the fourth one free. So uh, you can do that. It uh, does a top burn. It's not glyphosate where you touch it and it kills it, but they are non-selective. It's not. A, it's a non-selective uh, spray, so it will kill your items, but do it does it in a much more humane way, I guess, less, less damaging to the environment. Yeah, I would say so. So another thing is you can do is you can weed as you can, and that means like... Well, should, when you say that, should we pull the weeds out or just take like a hand trowel or a hole and just knock them down? What, what, what are we doing here? What's the best method or is there a right answer? I would say, well, I'm going to talk about weeding as you can. Okay. Um, so maybe you have a garden that you can split up into four sections, ideally, um, mentally to weed. And so you, instead of looking at it, okay, Saturday morning, before the heat of the day, I'm going to go out there and weed my garden. And then you feel overwhelmed and Saturday comes and you're like, I just want to sit here and sip my coffee and uh, stare at, you know, the trees. Right. Maybe instead <laughs> you come home from work on not Monday because nobody wants to do anything after work on Monday. So you, you think to yourself, OK, I'm going to come home from work on Tuesday. I'm going to weed this quarter of of the bed. Or maybe you work from home like many of us do now. And on your lunch break, you go out there and you weed this quarter of your garden and then maybe you do that on wednesday and thursday and friday and then saturday or whatever whatever portion of the week and then you don't have to do it for a couple more weeks because you've done such a good job weeding and then you can do something else well and different weeds appear at different times during the year danny lines are more prevalent in the spring than any time else and though they have great beneficial properties to the garden uh, people do not like them because they seed and they get everywhere well fun little fact on this there's 200 over 250 varieties of danny lines in the world they're all almost the entire plant is edible some people question whether the and some people get irritated by eating the stem the, from the flower to the plant uh the base but if you don't like dandelions in your yard or your garden for that matter you might want to talk to everybody within a five mile radius of your property because that's how far dandelion seeds can travel reseed and grow so spraying them whether using nat green products and and killing them in the yard uh or a harsh chemical or a 2,4-D, it you're you're fighting a losing battle. It's like trying to keep birds out of the out of your yard or out of the trees in your yard. It just doesn't work. Right, and that's the thing is that you you have to do what you can realistically do, and weeds are going to exist. Um, you do have other options though. Um, you want to make sure maybe you're trying to weed before the seeds form. Right. Smaller, smaller the better. Right. Um, and then also consider, you know, maybe a different method of gardening, whether it be raised beds, um, a straw bale method, containers, something that might be easier for you to control. Again, sometimes when you are, you feel like you're fighting a constant battle and you're like, okay, I'm sick of growing in the ground. I just feel like all I'm dealing with is. Which we got which, to that. Right. Like all I'm dealing and with we is, invested a, a good little mo a bit of money and, yeah. and went all to raised beds and brought in good quality compost raised bed mix. Though we still have weeds, 
nothing to the capacity in which we had and we are getting equal amount of produce out of the garden in a about a quarter of the space by going raised beds uh we we still have weeds we still fight the weeds but it's much easier to weed a four by eight or a four by 12 foot raised bed in a matter of 10 or 15 minutes with a garden fork or a few seconds uh with a garden trowel whenever the seeds are small rather than doing all oh, I got to do this whole section in order for us to plant. Um, so keep that in mind. And again, the smaller the weeds, the easier they are to harvest, uh, to, to remove, the quicker you can do such. And we've all been there. We've all pulled weeds out that were taller than us that took two people and a pair of gloves and, and to pull out a, a giant um, thistle or lamb's quarter or some other giant grass that we just never got to. Right. So we've all been there. Yeah, definitely. It does, it, it does happen. Um, yeah, so you definitely want to consider, like Joy had mentioned, and I had mentioned the raised beds. That was something that made a bit of a difference for us. Unfortunately, we still do deal with Creeping Charlie. Oh, yeah. And and you don't have to go, and, and, and we did this. You don't have to say, well, let's go to raised beds. Well, it's going to cost this much because we're going to put 19 beds in. You don't have to do 19 beds. You can do two or three days this year, two or three next year. When the lumber prices drop down low or you find free lumber, you can put another bed in that way. It, it doesn't have to be all, it's not like you're building a house where you have to have the house completely done before you can move in. You can do this in phases. Right. And that is something that you definitely, you know, can keep in, in mind. Um, I know we like the straw bell. Right. Garden. Straw bell garden. You can and, still get uh, the formulation for the conditioning process at bellbuster.com uh, from, uh, to, to get that bell ready. And, and Holly, and, and with the, the cr- constructing the raised beds, we've done it with traditional lumber and pallets. And the nice thing about building raised beds in phases, do you know what that is? Building them in phases? Yeah, doing a couple here and then waiting a while and doing a... You know what you did wrong on the first oh. two and you don't have to do... You can fix it on the next two or three. That's kind of what we did. We built, was it five? Yeah. Uh, yes. And then we Four built... Four five. Yeah, and then we built three uh-huh. the following year. And, and we, we've done two pal- two pallet raised beds. And then a door. And a door. We took an old wooden door we found in the attic and, and cut it down. There is a video on how to do such on our parent website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, upper right corner, put in door raised bed. And uh, you will find how we constructed it and an update on how it's functioning. And uh, spoiler, it's functioning quite well. Yeah, it's it's cool. Now, this I, is one of them old-fashioned hardwood doors. It's not the cheap stuff or the metal ones you get in how days. No, it's not like the ply, plywood, whatever door. It's a, a solid wood door. Yeah. We live, we rent in a, a very old, um, it was built in 1917, so what is it, 105 years old? home so it may have been worth a lot of money we don't know we don't know we, we cut it up <laughs> we cut it up anyway so there's probably some like a state sale person uh, like what is a thousand dollars yeah well it turned out to be a really nice expensive raised bed then right so yeah it's a it's a solid door and i i really like how it looks um i think it looks kind of whimsical and fun so maybe if you find a door in your attic and uh you're not an estate dealer. You can and you can take and when you build these raised beds, we did put cardboard down, but the cardboard has you know some of these weeds are very strong. Weeds are uh, going to overtake your garden if you allow them. They are much stronger genetically than your tomatoes, your peppers, your eggplants, your cucumbers. They are out to survive and choke out anything that's around them. That's just how it is. That's right. the way that the the weeds have been designed because in nature there's nothing that's bare. There's some kind of foliage or, or covering, and usually it's a, you know weeds or, or plants that would survive nowhere else, but it covers there in that poor soil, and you can't get anything to grow there but weeds. Absolutely. You do want to keep that in mind that sometimes, again, weeds can feel like a never-ending battle, and you're not alone. So you can join our uh, Weed Hater Support Group, and um, you can just tell your friends about a radio yeah. show. Now, another thing that's a never-ending battle is those Japanese beetles, Holly. The weather has warmed up, and it's warming up in almost all portions of the country. But you're still going to have to deal with those various beetles, weevils, and boars. Yep, those Japanese beetles are ready to ruin your summer. 
And what better way to prevent those pests from destroying your garden than by controlling them while they are larva? Grub Gone is an easy-to-apply granular product that can spread on your turf to successfully control grub invaders developed by Phylum Bioproducts from a naturally occurring bacteria. Grub Gone is a non-chemical BT product that specifically targets only scarab pests. It is safe to use around bees and other beneficial insects. If you already have those beetles flying around your yard, hey, Beetle Gone is the answer. It is an organic water dispersible powder that you can spray directly on your edible plants. You can find all this information out and a whole lot more at phylumbioproducts.com. That's P-H-Y-L-L-O-M bioproducts.com. And you can save money on your purchase by using code GARDENTALK10 at checkout to save 10% on your order. When we come back, author Tasha Greer will be with us. You're listening to The Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. Have a gardening question? Give Joey and Holly a call now or anytime 24-7. Just dial 1-800-927-SHOW. If you can't get through, leave a message and they will call you back. Call now, 1-800-927-SHOW. Chapin has the tools you need to water, feed, and protect your garden. We make equipment for lawn and garden care, and we are always innovating to help make your next growing season a success. Our newest products are the 5010 Rose Duster, watering tools including hose nozzles, sprinklers, and timers, the mixes on Exit Backpack Sprayer that mixes concentrate as you spray. You can find all products at www.chapinmfg.com, major online retailers, home improvement stores, and hardware stores near you. Japanese beetles show up in summer for a feeding frenzy in your garden, and they are the worst party guest, feeding on leaves, then laying eggs in your lawn for next year. Japanese beetles can decimate your plants and trees. Protect your plants with Japanese beetle traps from Rescue. New this year, Rescue has refilled lures to use the same trap again the next year. Made in the USA by the makers of the popular Rescue Fly in Yellow Jacket Traps. Learn more at Rescue.com. That's R-E-S-C-U-E dot C-O-M. 90% of the world's flowering plants require pollination to reproduce. Without pollinators, we humans would not survive. Here at Finding Nectar, a Denver suburb-based nursery providing flowering plants that are bee, butterfly, moth, and bat friendly. We are striving to get more pollinators into the backyards of Colorado. Together, we can increase the pollinating population one plant at a time. Affordable plants. Check all the plants out at 1550 Highway 72 in Arveda and at FindingNectar.com. Protect your plants from damage with the 3-in-1 Plant Guard and Special Blend Fertilizer. Visit IVOrganics.com. Use promo code RADIO10 to save 10% off your order. Show your body and monarch butterflies some love with Milkweed Balm. Made with milkweed seed oil to promote relaxation and muscle recovery. Full of antioxidants and packed with powerful omega fatty acids to fight pain and inflammation. Milkweed Balm is product-based conservation of wild monarch butterfly habitat. Visit milkweedbalm.com to find out more. Dig planting holes from a comfortable standing position. Step, twist, pull, and plant. Visit proplugger.com. Have you ever tried to carry all your tools and supplies on your tractor? You fumble around looking for the right one, unsafely holding them while you drive. Big Tool Rack developed a range of carry-all systems that attaches to your compact tractor in seconds, creating a mobile workstation that allows you to safely carry your tools and supplies. Big Tool Rack's telescoping wheel system and three-point hitch connections allows you to quickly attach and detach the carry-all system for easy storage. Working around the house, the homestead, or the farm big tool rack has your back and all your tools use code my rack five for five percent off purchases at bigtoolrack.com find out why we're built to haul it all take the guesswork out of composting with hot bin composting quickly break down food scraps within 30 to 90 days find out more at hotbincomposting.com root maker starts your plants off right and keeps them going through harvest from their seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots to their large variety of grow bags one to 60 gallons. Their products will provide you with the harvest that you've never seen before. Visit rootmaker.com and use coupon code RADIO22 to save 15% off your order. That's rootmaker.com. 
Thanks for listening to the Guardian with Joe and Holly radio show. As you've heard through the program, many companies offering coupon codes to help you save on great products. If you've missed any of those coupon codes, you can go to our parent website, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com, and click on the Money tab at the top of the page, and they're all listed for you. The Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Rootmaker, Dripworks, Pomona Universal Pectin, Phylum Bioproducts, Tree Diaper, Chapin Manufacturing Incorporated, Deer Defeat, Water Hoop. Find all sponsors at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Garden with Joy and Holly radio show. Tasha Greer, moments away, but first, a product that your garden and your plants will love if you add it for them to grow with. Are you worrying about your plant growth? Provide your plants with what they need to grow their potential. Simple Grow offers 100% organic worm castings at simplegrow.com. Unlike other worm casting products, when you order from Simple Grow, you're getting 100% worm castings, not filler plus castings. Promote ideal soil structure and aeration with Simple Grow, all natural and odor free worm castings. There's only one ingredient worm castings. No chemicals or additives will seep into your food and it doesn't smell like other fertilizers. For indoor and outdoor use, order by the bag, bundle, ton, or truckload. Check out Simple Grow 100% worm castings what they can do for your plants and order today at simplegrow.com well holly let's go to the proclamation hotline brought to you by proclamation goods and bring in our guest for this week tasha greer is a homesteader and writer focused on simple and sustainable living she is the author of grow your own spices and blogger on simplestead.com welcome to the program tasha Hi, guys. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join us on the program and enlighten us, not only Holly and myself, but all of our listeners across the country. So you call... I'm really glad to, to be here. <laughs> Fantastic. So you call yourself a homesteader. What is the biggest miscommunication you have found about people who look at some who label themselves as homesteaders? <laughs> Well, I, I can't speak for everybody that's a homesteader, but I, I actually call myself an Epicurean homesteader, so I'm kind of a, a moderate homesteader. And I think what a lot of people, you know, they always ask me, well, you must spend all of your time working really hard and doing hard work. And I'm like, no, I, I actually have a really good time. <laughs> I, I get to play with animals and, and play out in the garden and um, cook exciting foods. And so I think the misconception is that this is a hard lifestyle. And I just, that hasn't been my experience. I think it's just really a fun and pleasurable way of living. It, would you agree that it is as hard as you allow it to be? I think so. There's certainly, you know, there's a lot of hard ways to do this, but, you know, so you could definitely make it hard and complicated. And, um, but, you know, I think if you, if you know how much time you've got, if you know what your interests are, if you understand your, um, you, you know, your goals and, and, and try to sort of replace some of the things that you really value in your life already, then you can, you can have a good time doing it. Now you have animals on your property and, and you have land to support those animals. As we are in spring now and we see the farm stores getting the baby chickens and other animals and, and people are like, Oh, I want it. What is the, um, checklist that someone needs to go over before they make that impulse decision to buy that baby chick or that baby rabbit or whatever that animal is for themselves or their kids? I'm really glad you asked that question because the first time I got the, got some, I went to the tractor supply, I saw a few ducks. <laughs> I thought, oh, I'll just bring them home. <laughs> and I was not prepared. And so I, uh, I realized then that it probably would have been a good idea to do a little bit of research in advance to really sort of understand what their, their needs were, what kind of care I was going to have to give them. So I think for new people who are just kind of, you know, seeing those adorable chicks, um, you really want to make sure that you're prepared for the brood. They're going to need to be warm, you know, some sort of um, lit warm place or, or safe. Um, you know, I mean, completely, because even like things like rats or things could get your little baby chicks. So you can't just leave them out. Um, and then even as they age, you know, until they're... In, you know, until they're six or seven months old, they're not really fully mature. They don't have sort of all their mental faculties yet. And you have to really give them good juvenile protection, kind of treat them like, um, you know, between toddler and, and a teenager. You have to kind of 
you help them grow up, kind of. And then once they are mature, you still always have to worry about predators. I mean, possums, um, raccoons, dogs, even sometimes cats. If you have a phantom seeds can be a problem. So you're going to need to get them secure living accommodations for their entire life cycle. Um, and I think a lot of people don't realize that chickens, you know, if you get a hybrid chicken, they might be really productive for about two years, having lots of eggs. And then after that, they, you know, they kind of don't lay anymore. So you might have to call them or um, you usually can't find people who want to take non-laying chickens. So you usually have to kind of have a plan for processing them. So if you don't want to deal with that, then you might want a heritage breed. They won't lay as much, but they will lay longer. And so you won't have to think about that for a long time. So there's just a, um, a lot of things to consider when you're getting chickens or ducks or any kind of livestock. And so if you can do some research and preparation and not just be, you know, wowed by how adorable they are, I think you will um, be more prepared and not as stressed. Now, you say that the uh, chickens, they may not lay as long as you expect them to, and you have to figure out what to do with them, whether butchering them out or, or, or so to speak. Now, are is the meat still fairly, I guess, uh, pl- e- good to eat? Because I know in the hog world, a sow that's had multiple litters of pigs, it's not the best eating meat. That's why they usually turn that into sausage. Is chickens that are only a couple years old that's done laying eggs, are they still pretty good to eat? <laughs> Well, they're, um, they certainly can be. I mean, they can still taste really good, but there's usually, we most call them spot chickens at that point because it's not going to be a very tender meat. But, okay. you know, if you, you get out your slow cooker, um, it can still have, they, actually, they taste sometimes better when they're older, but um, because they've, you know, got more developed muscles and, and just a lot more uh, full flavored. But, yeah, you definitely have to cook them longer. <laughs> Thank you. So your book, Weed-Free Gardening, looks intriguing. Many people try to have a weed-free garden. Maybe they do so well. Maybe they don't don't do so well. What is something in your book that would encourage our listeners to check it out and find success? Uh, Thank you for bringing up my new book, Weed-Free Gardening. Um, I think the really big misconception that people just miss with weeds is that they think that they're like a plant that shouldn't be there. And in our gardens, you know, I mean, they, we don't want them there, but nature puts them there for a reason. And nature, I mean, that is as a system of life. Um, you know, there's all this stuff going on underneath the soil that we can't see it, but it still exists. And so the weeds that come up are you know, germinated because some condition in the soil was met. So maybe there was a pH change, or perhaps there was um, a sudden, you know, rush of nitrogen, or maybe there was you know, some kind of digging animal underneath there that was disturbing the seeds and, you know, caused a little weathering and so they germinated. So when when weeds come, there's a reason that they arrive. And so if you can stop and figure out the reason and what sort of underlying instability is taking place in the soil, then you can address that instability and prevent more weeds from coming. I think a lot of people just rip out the weed and then more come and then they rip out those weeds and then more come and it's just really just awful perpetual cycle of weeding. But if you could address the soil and deal with the actual issue that causes the weeds, then you can really start to ramp up your gardening. Um, I think another big issue is that a lot of people don't realize that most soil does not have enough carbon in it um, because it's, you know, we haven't had enough root systems in there. We haven't used um, deep enough, you know, plants that root deep enough. And so we're not, the plants aren't putting enough carbon into the soil. So you need more carbon than you think. And so you've, you've got to really add a lot of compost. You've got to use mulch and you need to use those intelligently because they can also cause weeds. So I think my book, I try to address sort of all of these factors that contribute to causing weeds and the way that you can successfully use amendments to control them. Definitely. So we are speaking with Tasha Greer, homesteader, author, and focused on sustainable living. Now, you on your homestead, you harvest many things. And one thing that people may not think about harvesting is water. How do you harvest the water in your homestead? And are there any rules or laws that you need or should follow or scoot around in order to do it, quote unquote, legally? That's a great question. I think um, sort of 
our, my background is kind of, uh, I got really interested in permaculture. So I kind of knew going into setting up a homestead that one of the very first things you have to think about is water. Um, especially when you're in a rural area and you can't just turn on the tap and get an endless supply. Um, so, you know, there's, if you were starting a new property, you definitely need, you know, some kind of well or something for drinking water. But um, but you don't usually want to use a well for watering a massive garden. So a lot of times you'll end up setting up ponds or you'll collect rainwater from all of the roofs of your structures. Uh, and in a rural area, you don't have a whole lot of, of rules to contend with. But anytime you start digging, um, you have to be concerned about utilities. You have to be concerned about um, hydrology of the land. I mean, there's, you can actually sort of destabilize and cause problems if you don't understand your soil before you start digging. Um, but when you live in more populated areas, there, there can even be regulations on you know, harvesting water through rain barrels or um, using irrigation. Uh, you may have to, you know, be away from your, your neighbor's property. If you have, uh, sometimes you know, if we do digging, you know, like a rain garden or something like that, and your gardener neighbor next door was relying on water that was run off your property and then all of their plants died, then you could have a neighbor problem. So really before you start harvesting rainwater, you need to understand your landscape. You need to also pay attention to your neighbors and like with your local regulators to find out what those are. But then you want to think of as many as you can to harvest water. So definitely ponds are a good tool, rain gardens, swale, kugel cultures, um, rain barrels, your house, um, you know, any way you can harvest water is good. Just unless you live in a really rainy area and never ever have to worry about rain, then you're probably going to want to have a reservoir so that you're not drawing on your well or um, you know, just having a really expensive water bill, trying to maintain a garden and a food forest or whatever it is that you're growing and all of your livestock, of course, as well. Definitely. So you teach garden, you teach courses on edible landscaping. What is edible landscaping and how can one start incorporating it into their yard? That's a great question. Right now I'm on rural property and so I kind of do whatever I want. But when I actually started setting up living in the suburbs, and highly regulated housing development. And I couldn't just put like rows of crops out of my front yard or even my backyard because uh, they the, the neighbors make some about this. So the landscaping is really sort of a way to get around any regulation. Um, they're basically making your food look like an ornamental garden, look like what your neighbors are expecting your yard to look like. So what you end up doing is substituting uh, like you know, trees in for, you know, other trees and uh, fruit shrubs and berries and herbs and things in for the other decorative plants that you would normally uh, use. And you, you know, maybe mix in some containers and um, just really sort of try to upscale the way that you're growing food so that it looks like an ornamental garden. Um, and you know, a lot of you also need to avoid some things that your neighbors might not like, such as mulberries that, or uh, berries with thorns that might, you know, cause cause problems for their pets. But there are a lot of really good options. I mean, rosemary, lavender, those are choices. They're very beautiful. Um, elderberry, the, the wild ones, you maybe don't want to go there, but there are some more cultivated varieties, like a, a cut lace um, elderberry. And there's also aronia, that's a beautiful native shrub that's some really like superfood berries, uh, lettuces, uh, strawberries, chard, kale. These are all really beautiful potatoes. You have a long growing period and they can kind of fill in the sort of uh, the space in your, your existing landscape. Absolutely. Well, we greatly appreciate the time you've offered us, Tasha. How can people find out more about you and get your new book? Well, so the book is actually, I've got Grow Your Own Spices and Weed Free Gardening, and both of theirs are available at booksellers everywhere. Um, and the publisher is actually Corto, so you can find them at Corto Nose, and they're also selling it. But, you know, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, your local bookstore, anybody will have those. Um, but if you want to see some pictures of my homestead and find out more about what I'm doing, you can go to simplestead.com. Um, or if you're on Instagram, I'm at Explore Simplestead. And so it's like simple homestead practice or simple bed. 
Simplestead.com, Simplestead.com. Well, Tasha, we greatly thank you for the time you've offered us and the education that you've provided Holly and myself and all of our listeners. Well, thank you guys for the great work you're doing. Well, thank thank you. you very much. And when we come back, it's your garden questions, our garden answers. This is the Garden with Joey and Holly radio show. Got a question for Joey and Holly? Send it via email anytime to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Jung Seed Company is a family-owned and operated gardening company since 1907 with the largest selection of seeds and plants online. Use code 10 TG22 to receive 10% off your order at jungseed.com. That code again is 10TG22. If you could double the life of your raised bed boxes by sealing the wood with a clear non-toxic wood preservative, would you? Well, now you can with a clear penetrating product called Internal Wood Stabilizer. It's 100% non-toxic and easy to apply. Seal your untreated wood surfaces, even chicken coops, by spraying on Internal Wood Stabilizer. It's invisible, seals the wood from the inside out, and never wears off. Recommended by organic gardening experts, Internal Wood Stabilizer. Check it out at TimberProCoatingsUSA.com. This week's garden tip is sponsored by the amazing Dr. Zymes. Eliminate and prevent garden pests with their 100% all-natural, all-in-one insecticide and fungicide. Experience powerful natural protection from insects, fungus, mold, and mildew. Try a free sample. Visit drzymes.com forward slash garden talk. The amazing Dr. Zymes Eliminator is a revolutionary green solution that kills and eliminates soft body insects, moles, and mildew on your indoor and outdoor garden. Eliminator is a proprietary formula handcrafted to ensure quality control. Professional growers use it all year to ensure pest-free, mildew-free plants. Eliminator is comprised of organic materials combined with other biological stimulating ingredients. Eliminator is made in handcrafted batches to ensure quality control. That helpful garden tip was sponsored by the amazing Dr. Zymes. Eliminate and prevent garden pests with their 100% all-natural, all-in-one insecticide and fungicide. Experience powerful natural protection from insects, fungus, mold, and mildew. Try a free sample. Visit drzymes.com forward slash garden talk. Pomona's Universal Pectin is a high quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, you'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar or honey to sweeten. Pomona's Universal Pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Also available at natural food stores and online. Make watering easy. DripWorks provides quality drip irrigation supplies and equipment to gardeners just like you for all your growing needs across the U.S. and Canada. Purchase online at DripWorks.com. Brought to you by Blue Ribbon Organics, providing locally made organic compost and soil blends for gardens, farms, landscaping, and more. Visit BlueRibbonOrganics.com or call 262-497-8539 to find their products nearest you. Thanks for listening to the Garden with Joe and Holly radio show. As you've heard through the program, many companies offering coupon codes to help you save on great products. If you've missed any of those coupon codes, you can go to our parent website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, and click on the Money tab at the top of the page, and they're all listed for you. The Garden with Joy and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Tree Ripe, Covers in All, Ironwood Tool Company, Timber Pro Coatings, Blue Ribbon Organics, Natural Green Products, Algae Men, Dr. Zyme, Happy Leaf LED, Rescue, Big Tool Rack, Hot Bin Composting, Proclamation Goods. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even Welcome back to the Garden with Joy and Holly radio go. show. I Happy you've been with us for the program. We're going to get going on questions here. If you've got a question, you can certainly submit that to us two different ways. GardenTalkRadio at gmail.com. GardenTalkRadio at gmail.com. Or you can give us a call on the Proclamation Hotline brought to you by Proclamation Goods. And that number is 1-800-927-SHOW. 1-800-927-SHOW. 7469. Proclamation Goods creates cookware for the eco conscious home chef. Their pans are non toxic, have a lifetime warranty, 
and are made right here in Wisconsin. Their award-winning stainless steel Proclamation Duo cookware set is a 12-inch skillet and a stock pot that doubles as a wok. Best of all, the skillet and stock pot hinge together to form a Dutch oven. It's two pans with a versatility of 10, empowering you to cook more with less. If you care about your health and strive for a more sustainable lifestyle, then Proclamation Goods is for you. Supplies limited, so order yours now at proclamationgoods.com. We're going to go to the Proclamation Hotline brought to you by Proclamation Goods, and Shannon has a question. Listen to us on WNAX 570 AM out of Yankton, South Dakota. Hi, this is Shannon, and I'm calling from Yankton, South Dakota. That's the southeastern corner of South Dakota. And I was wanting to know what I could plant that would be pretty and ornamental, not necessarily fruits, vegetables, but just something real pretty and ornamental that I could plant on the west side of a shed in our yard. Um, It's shaded most of the day. And I've been watching, and it doesn't really get light until the afternoon around 2 o'clock is when it really gets hit with the afternoon light. And I'm wondering what would be the best thing to plant there. Thank you. Bye. All right, Holly, what can we do? Can we help Shannon? Yes, we can. Got a couple of options for Shannon, Holly. Yeah, so one would be hostas. Those are always a good option in a situation like that. Um, ornamental grasses. There are perennial ornamental grasses. You just go to your local independent garden center and speak with them about perennial ornamental grasses and they can point you in the right direction. And then also another variety called coral bells. And those are pretty leafy perennial. Multiple colors to choose from. Yeah, multiple colors to choose from. Really nice looking. And then ferns. Right. Um, don't want anything like a tree or anything there because it's next to the building, but something that will come back year after year, minimal maintenance, and you will enjoy that very much. Uh, let's go back to the Proclamation Hotline brought to you by Proclamation Goods and go over to Colorado to talk to Nancy, who's listening to us on the Roar of the Rockies, KHNC 1360 AM. Hello. Yes, my name is Nancy, and I am located in Colorado. And my question is, I have looked on the Internet and seen dozens of suggestions on what to use when planting your tomatoes as far as, you know, nutrients and that to put in the hole while you're planting them. And I was calling to find out what your recommendation is. Thank you. All right, Holly. Well, you asked two gardeners what to plant in the hole with the tomatoes. You get 17 different answers. Uh, what we would recommend is we don't put tums or powdered milk or sh- uh, eggshells or anything in the hole. What we have is a good foundation of a good compost or soil that it's healthy. And we do add fertilizer. We add, Yeah, we add uh, organic fertilizer. All you know, balanced. All, all purpose. Yeah. So something like a 10, 10, 10 or less. Right. Ideally, a little bit less. It doesn't have to be like 777. It might be like 757 or 535 or 357, whatever. Yeah. But it's a 10 to 10 or less all-purpose all organic fertilizer. And then what we do is once we have the tomato planted, we trim off the lower few inches of leaves. And then we use whole grain cornmeal, yellow, yellow whole grain cornmeal, and just take a handful of it, sprinkle it around the base of the plant, and that helps prevent early blight, and you're good to go. Yes, uh, so nothing fancy. Just follow the recommended rate, recommended rates on the back of the fertilizer bag. Just because it says two tablespoons doesn't mean four is better. You can actually damage and cause more problems with that. Uh, so that being said, uh, can you eat beet greens, Holly? You certainly can. You, wanna you don't want to eat the stem. I tried that. That wasn't that good. <laughs> At, no. at, at a mature state. Now we're talking if at an immature state or a baby green type s- size, right? Yeah. So if you have younger plants, you can certainly eat the beet greens. They are going to be more tender, um, have more a little bit of, uh, I don't know, taste. Um, as less get, earthy. Less earthy. Once they get, once they get, you know, to more mature when you're ready to harvest the beets, yeah. they get a little bit rough. Um, so if you, like for us, we... When we plant beets, we do thin them out once they start to sprout a little bit. So you could eat those baby greens and they would be quite delicious. Right. So with that being said, Holly, we are out of time and we thank you all 
for yours. Did you miss any portion of the program today or would like to revisit it? You can certainly do that by going to our parent website, which is the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com and clicking on the season six tab at the top of the page, scrolling through and seeing our sponsors and past shows and catching up. Or you can send us an email at to garden talk radio at gmail.com and we will send you a link to this program. It's a uh, tune in next week of the program. We're going to talk about those summer bugs that are going to invade your garden and your yard and what to do about it, as well as birds and bats on your property. Yep, they are a good thing, and we'll explain why. Our guest will be author Charlotte Wiggins, and we'll answer your garden questions. So until next week for Holly Baird, I'm Joy Baird, and we will see you in the garden. <laughs>